Experience the allure of Uzbekistan, where every corner reveals a treasure trove of culture and affordability. Join us on a journey through the heart of Central Asia in life in Uzbekistan, the cheapest country in the world. Part 1. From the vibrant markets to the rich history, discover why Uzbekistan is a traveler's paradise. Stay tuned for an adventure like no other. Uzbekistan is the most affordable country on earth. The Republic of Uzbekistan, as it is officially called, is one of the major nations in Central Asia. It is fairly expansive, with a territory that is roughly 450,000 kilometers square. Not all of the nation is appropriate for human habitation though, because of the mountains and deserts that form its terrain. This large country is the most populated in Central Asia, home to almost 36 million people. As could be assumed, Tashkent, the country's capital, is the most visited place in Uzbekistan, and frequently acts as travelers' first stop. Tashkent played an important role as a commerce hub, particularly during the Soviet era. Actually, behind Moscow and St. Petersburg, it had the second highest population of any Soviet city. Currently, Tashkent is home to almost 3 million people. There isn't a shoreline in Uzbekistan that faces the ocean. There are just rivers and lakes inside its boundaries. Among these is the Aral Sea, which was formerly one of the world's largest lakes and was even called a sea. Sadly, it has since faded and is only a shell of what it once was. Furthermore, as the world's fourth largest producer of gold, Uzbekistan is a truly wealthy country. In addition to gold, the area contains other hidden riches such as uranium, which they take from their mines. Due to its exceptionally fertile territory, Uzbekistan ranks fifth in the world for cotton output. In addition, the nation possesses natural resources such as coal, oil, and natural gas. Upon examining its past, we discover that Uzbekistan was once the most well-known commercial hub in all of Central Asia, serving as a nexus for trade between China and Europe via the Silk Road. Interactions across cultures were also rather prevalent. Uzbekistan rose to prominence and prosperity, drawing the attention of powerful leaders such as Genghis Khan and Alexander the Great. Throughout history, Uzbekistan has been severely affected by the Mongol invasions. Following this time, Uzbekistan was ruled by the renowned monarch Timur, who promoted the arts and culture. Through his introduction of intellectuals and philosophers to Samarkand, Timur ensured the advancement of culture. Uzbekistan also saw the establishment of important Islamic schools under Timur's reign. It's easy to notice that more than 90% of the cars on the streets of Tashkent are Chevrolets. The reason for this is the hefty import taxes on automobiles. General Motors, a multinational conglomerate, established a manufacturing facility in Uzbekistan to manufacture Chevrolet automobiles at a reduced cost compared to locally manufactured vehicles. The region's Islamic culture has been preserved in all its splendor up to this day. With the breakup of the Soviet Union in 1991, Uzbekistan became an independent nation. The Uzbek people are proud of their history and culture in this way. In addition to its capital, Tashkent, the nation is home to well-known cities in Central Asia like Bukhara and Samarkand. To the south are Afghanistan and Turkmenistan. To the east are Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. And to the west and north are Kazakhstan. The majority of nationalities can enter Uzbekistan as tourists without a visa. You will need to apply for both a work permit and a resident permit, though if you intend to work there or remain for an extended amount of time. Given that Uzbek and Russian are the two most widely spoken languages in the nation, you must become fluent in them. Furthermore, more than 90% of people identify as Muslims, making Uzbekistan a Central Asian nation that has accepted Islam. People in Uzbekistan, an efficient modern nation, are allowed to practice their religion and dress however they like. As a result, Uzbekistan's cultural orientation is more toward that of countries like Kazakhstan and Russia than it is toward Arab culture. Furthermore, it might be thought to be dangerous given its proximity to regions like Afghanistan, however, that is untrue. Of all the Central Asian countries, Uzbekistan is one of the most livable. Like any other nation, Uzbekistan is a place where money talks. Therefore, if you can manage to make some US dollars here, you can pretty much start your kingdom. When you travel to Uzbekistan, its bazaars, markets, and bread 
will be among the first things that you notice. People passionately prepare bread in a large number of bakeries spread over different locations. You may discover a variety of bread varieties in Uzbekistan, each with a distinct flavor that you may have never experienced before. The good news is that these lovely loaves are reasonably priced at about $1 a piece. Indeed, bread costs less in Uzbekistan than in Europe because meat is the primary ingredient in the nation's cuisine. Here, beef is also incredibly reasonably priced. For $3, you can have a delicious kebab, for instance. Another benefit of markets is that vendors will give you free samples of their goods as soon as they look you in the eye. This is fantastic, since it demonstrates that people are willing to trust the caliber of the goods they are selling and are making an effort to draw clients by providing these samples. The kindness and friendliness of the Uzbek people are also well known. Not only that, but the marketplaces match those in Mongolia in terms of size and stall style. You'll notice that folks smile at you and have shining eyes as you go around the bazaars. But regrettably, the tale does have a dark side. Certain individuals who discern that you are a visitor and lack familiarity with Uzbekistan can attempt to trick you. To blame Uzbekistan for this is unfair. There are cunning people in practically every region of the globe. For instance, they might impose three fees. What a taxi normally costs in Bukhara and Samarkand, People may masquerade as personnel at museum entrances and demand an admission fee, or they may indicate far higher costs than they should in souvenir stores, even in countries where museums are free. It seems as though they are deceiving you mentally. As a result, it's wise to stay vigilant at all times. I advise you to select a local guide who is familiar with that culture before embarking on a joint exploration of the nation when you are there. In this manner, having a native by your side eliminates the possibility of someone taking advantage of you. However, in modern Uzbekistan, people approach you with enormous delight and a welcoming demeanor as soon as they recognize that you are a tourist regardless of your nationality or ethnic identity. They are pleased that individuals from all over the globe are learning about their nation. Local families will undoubtedly want to greet you, feed you, and make you feel at home especially if you travel to rural areas. Meat dishes coupled with rice are one of their cuisine's distinctive specialties. One thing to keep in mind when visiting Uzbekistan is that tea is consumed all day long. But they also drink a lot of green tea in addition to black tea. Additionally, people enjoy blending these teas with flavors like lemon. By the way, we should not overlook the widespread usage of cumin and horse meat in Uzbekistan. You must remove your shoes at the door if you are a guest in someone's home in Uzbekistan, especially if that person lives in an apartment. This is especially true if you are visiting the capital, Tashkent, and you speak Russian fluently. Making friends and becoming closer to the locals doesn't take long. The majority of people in the capital speak Russian in daily conversation. Speaking Russian makes it simple for someone to fit in with Uzbek society. However, there is a climate-related problem. Anyone considering a midsummer trip to Uzbekistan should reconsider, as places such as Tashkent, Bukhara, and Samarkand experience extreme heat and humidity. Temperatures higher than 50 degrees Celsius are encountered by people. I advise anyone interested in visiting Uzbekistan to do it between August and November as a result. Of course, there are many different nuts and fruits to sample at relatively affordable costs in an area with such intense heat. The heat might not bother you much if you enjoy reading and taking pictures. Due to its historical legacy, which was molded by the Silk Road, Uzbekistan is now the hub of tourism in Central Asia. Cities like Bukhara, Tashkent, and Samarkand don't stop their daily activities in the evenings. These three cities are home to a variety of eateries that offer tasty and enjoyable evening meals. Say you're having dinner at a restaurant, and all of a sudden, you see Uzbek dancers in the square performing their traditional dances. To be honest, it's far more enjoyable to observe the unique dances of Central Asian culture. The dancers in Central Asian dances move around the stage with an elegance that is extremely graceful, akin to that of swans. They shine not only in their dances, but also in their traditional garb. Additionally, alcohol is unrestricted in Uzbekistan. You are free to drink as much vodka or whiskey as you like while visiting the location and to pass the time doing any kind of entertainment you find enjoyable. For instance, 
You may also make nightclubs more enjoyable because, in Uzbekistan people enjoy having a good time, and nightclubs tend to grow busy, especially on weekends. In addition, people are still affected by the terrible earthquake that struck the nation's capital, Tashkent, in 1966, and had a Richter scale value of 8. To put that earthquake into perspective, over 300,000 people were left homeless when over 36,000 buildings were destroyed. Even the subsequent aftershocks, which had a magnitude of 7, were a testament to the strength of the initial earthquake. People in Tashkent at the time compared city life to riding on the back of a crazy camel. Tashkent was subsequently reconstructed with significant assistance from the Soviet Union. Today's Tashkent houses are often not very tall, with four or five floors. The earthquake of 1966 caused several of them to be constructed. These homes often have a small number of apartments. The flats in question are two-room units that have about 70 square meters living area and a bedroom. Because so many Russians have gone to Uzbekistan, the situation in Eastern Europe has resulted in higher costs these days. Thank you for exploring the wonders of Uzbekistan with us. If you want to continue discovering more about this fascinating country and other amazing destinations around the world, don't forget to subscribe for future updates and travel inspirations. Until next time, happy travels!